I know that God was the one who saved me. When I was on the hospital bed after I attempted to save my life, God was the one who saved me when I couldn't save myself, when I didn't want to live. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Wednesdays with Watson podcast. I am so glad you are here. It is May of 2022, and we are observing Mental Health Awareness Month here at the Wednesdays with Watson podcast. As many of you know, this is a podcast dedicated to mental health year round. We've been doing that about two and a half years now, and we've done that through lots of hope and education, stories, therapists, and and really, really excited to be able to help people year round. But we are focusing on some other mental health diagnoses in this podcast in this episode today. This is a podcast that is supported by listeners like you, and we are so grateful. Not only do your contributions really help us continue this podcast, but it helps us with our mission of providing pro bono counseling for those who can't afford it. If you're by any chance or interested in joining that mission, just click that Contact Amy button in the show notes. And there are several ways you can contact me or visit our Patreon page. I would also be honored and would love it if you would hit that subscribe button right there in your podcast app so that when we drop a new podcast, it shows up on your device. We are so grateful for all of our listeners all over the world and hope that many of you are also finding hope in Jesus, the star of the story. Guys, today I am so excited. This is episode 6465, and this is one of the most exciting interviews that I've been looking forward to. Today I have another mental health advocate here with me, but more than that, she is a survivor of a lot of things, and she's going to talk to us about that a little bit today. She is another person who is going to give you hope. And I am so, so honored to welcome today, Simone Lachey. Welcome, Simone, to the Wednesdays with Watson podcast. Thank you so much for having me. This has been a long time coming, so I'm excited as well. It has been a long time coming. It has been um, so, so excited. Well, we're just going to jump right in here. This is season three of the Wednesdays with Watson podcast. And and as I sent you in the pre-interview notes, this first question I'm going to ask you has been one of the most difficult to answer. And I didn't really realize that when I crafted it, I crafted it as a question to be an icebreaker, but it turned into this cathartic, well thought out answers that I'm getting from people. And so I'm asking everybody this first question. And so my first question to you, Simone, is what is your favorite thing about how God made you? What is, what's your favorite thing of your image bearer status? Honestly, creativity. I always say creativity that God has given me. Um, Able to do so many things, even with what I've gone through, I'm able to channel that in so many different ways and help so many different people because of the creativity that God has blessed me with. So that I would simply say is creativity without a doubt. I got chills a little bit because that is so true. And we are going to provide all the ways for people to find you. But guys, Simone is another Instagram hero of mine and Mm -hmm. so creative and just really trying to find ways to get that message. And you know, Simone, my doctor says one of my favorite statements is that shouldn't be able to happen. And with the the things that you're going to possibly share with us today. Creativity is one of the very first things that goes, you are absolutely one of the most creative people that I know. And gorgeous, I might add. You guys need to look at her picture in the promos. (laughs) Yeah, she really is. Well, Simone, as you know, I asked you here today for a very specific reason besides the fact that I just adore you. We, I just want to tell this backstory really quickly. So I guess it was, I don't even know, It it was somewhere after the pandemic started, maybe the summer of 2020, when we all discovered this Clubhouse app and, and, and there are a bunch of us, we called ourselves Mental Health Avengers, began to do these rooms and, and began to really be advocates on that Clubhouse app and burned ourselves out, I might add. And, but <laughs> but that, is, that is how I got to know you and how I got to know the beauty that 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 is you in terms of the the how you show up in this world and what you bring to the mental health world you are an advocate i called this episode advocating for sound minds and people will understand that a little bit more as we get through the episode but you know i asked you here today because you are a mental health warrior you're a survivor of some things that you're going to share with us you are a christian you live with a few mental health diagnoses And additionally, this season, though, we are focusing on childhood trauma. And I want to get into that a little bit with you. 
not only as a survivor, but as an advocate. We talked a lot in this season about adverse childhood experiences, a term that I know is un not unfamiliar to you. We're doing that to educate parents that are going to listen to this, especially this episode highlighting Mental Health Awareness Month. I want parents to understand what adverse childhood experiences are and if their children are going through them and they don't know. Or I want people who have adverse childhood experiences to understand and be validated. And so I'm asking everyone these questions, and you can decline to answer, and if so, we'll move on, but that's okay. But the description is in the name. They're adverse childhood experiences, and there are 10 of them. And if we have experienced three or four of these adverse childhood experiences, there are 10 of them, experts define that as we are living under toxic stress unless we get help. And so I'm just going to ask you yes or no questions. First, let me ask you, are you okay with answering the adverse childhood experience questions? For sure. Okay, Absolutely. perfect. I, I know that there can be some shame in some of these things, and so I always Absolutely. like to ask that, you know. And and I also know that family members are going to listen and, and, and all of that. And so, okay, so just yes and no, because I want my listeners to get an idea of who is on the other side of this microphone. So at any time in your childhood, so let's say from zero to 18, it doesn't necessarily have to be in your home, though we are focusing on childhood trauma in the home, but, but your answer doesn't have to be in your home. I'm just going to ask yes or no questions. The first one is, as a child, zero to 18, did you experience physical abuse? No. Well, oh. yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Sexual abuse? No. Okay. Emotional abuse? Yes. Physical neglect? No. How about emotional neglect? Yes. Mental illness in the home? Yes. Divorce in the home? No. Substance abuse? No. Domestic violence? Yes. And this is particularly true against your mother. So any, any sort of domestic violence, verbal, okay, that's a big one. And then did you um, have a relative in prison? No. Okay. So yours is a four, almost a five. Like it depended on how you answered that one yeah, question. When I when I did it the first time, it was like a border. Yeah, it was like a borderline. Yeah, so, so I think it was like a four or five. Yeah. yeah. So it makes sense. Like many people I interview, that you lived under a bunch of toxic stress as a child. And so I do that for my guests too to validate if you were to have a bad day. I was like, you know what? All the experts are saying that I have a four out of a 10, it's 40% of the 10 adverse experiences and you live under toxic stress. And we're going to get to that a little bit more. And I want your opinion on how you think that affected your mental health diagnoses. But as I mentioned, you are an amazing mental health advocate. And towards the end of the show, I'm going to have you tell everyone about your 501c3 organization and its mission. But we just heard your answer to those questions. But can you articulate for me why mental health advocacy is so important to you because it really does. I believe that Simone Lachey works a real job and then does the rest of her life in mental health advocacy and has to remind yourself to have fun sometimes. Why is mental <laughs> health, <laughs> why is it so important to you? Um, because I see the need for mental health advocacy. When I first came out about the truth of my story, I got so much feedback about how many people were struggling. And after I had heard that, I said, there, there has to be some work done. I have to keep going. I have to keep sharing my story. I have to keep being open because it's helping the next person also feel comfortable with what, or more comfortable. It's not a comfortable feeling, but more comfortable with a diagnosis per se or taking medication and things like that it helps the next person so that's why I feel like it's so important to advocate and share my story there's still a stigma on mental illness as we know so working towards breaking that stigma and all the things to definitely move us forward in the name of mental health yeah and and we're going to get to this a little bit later but I do want to introduce it here it was also important to you as a Christian to be a mental health right. advocate. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? One of the reasons I would say it was so important um, in regards to Christianity and promoting Christianity, my 
organization is faith-based is because I know that God was the one who saved me. When I was on the hospital bed after I attempted to save my life, God was the one who saved me when I couldn't save myself, when I didn't want to live. When I have depressive episodes now, even now, I know that God is my hope. My trust in Christ is my hope. I know that God is not going to leave me where I am. I'm not going to die in a depressive state because there's light at the end of the tunnel because of the God I serve. What a what a beautiful articulate answer. And there so there are quite a few years between you and me. And one of the reasons why I'm so excited about what you're doing and particularly in the faith space, and obviously so am I, is because when I was even your age, we didn't talk about this in the church. If you tried to take your life, which both of us tried to do, then we were looked down upon at the church. And some people would even say, go so far as to say that that would, that, that would immediately send us to hell if we, if we tried to take our lives. Or if we were depressed or we were anxious, you know, I call it, you got a problem, I got a Bible verse. And so I think it's, you know what I'm saying? I think it's like, you know, yeah, it's like I'm having, I'm having a panic attack, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication and let your request be known. Listen, I believe, I love the Bible. I love the word of God, but there's a time and place for it. And when somebody's having a panic attack, that's not the place to do it. And so one of the things that's always been so endearing to me about you is that you've not been ashamed that you are a Christian. And we're going to talk about, as you mentioned, your, 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 your 501c3 and your faith-based organization. But to me, looking at it from the outside and you and, and, and our friend Marlena, who's going to be on in June, we just kind of all three bonded together. And, mm-hmm. and it was so endearing to me because for us, for those of us who have attempted to take our lives and are living with mental health diagnosis ease, it is very easy to just forget God and listen to the naysayers in the church that say, well, you might not be praying enough or you, you might be sinning. Uh, can you talk to right. me a little bit about that? Cause I know that's a, a bit of a soapbox of yours. For sure. Like you said, that one of the first things that I was told by the first visitor that I had received when I was in the facility was, you know, if you kill yourself that you're going to hell. I was like, oh, okay, that's very welcoming. Yeah, th- thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you. That's not what I wanted to hear. Right. <laughs> that's not necessarily what I wanted to hear. Um, it was less than comforting. It was, I feel like Christians can be so dismissive. Like when they say, oh, um, I'll pray for you. I always, that's something I talk about a lot. It, it, it can appear dismissive. I believe that prayer works a thousand percent. But just saying that you're going to pray for somebody is just not necessarily the end all. Be right. All. Um. I believe faith without works is dead. The Bible says that. And if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, taking care of yourself and going to get the help that you need and things like that, then you might still be suffering. You know, you can have God in your life and still suffer from a mental illness. I, I know from personal experience. Yeah, me and too. I, I have faith in God, but I see the little comments like on Facebook about just just have a little bit more faith, be stronger and, and all these things. And that is just, I, in my opinion, it just perpetuates the shame associated with mental illness in the church. I agree with you. And I think that there's something that you do really well. And, and I hope that I do well, but because you, you use an example there that I thought was so powerful. When we say to somebody that we're going to pray for them, that that's all well and good. But to them, we're going to pray to a God that has harmed them, right? And there's something so precious about the ministry of your presence, right? Like my my DMs are open if you just need to talk. I have a, a young lady in, in England who I jump in a clubhouse room every now and then. She is so agnostic, so far from believing in God. But the practice of the presence of somebody who does love God and is showing her a little bit differently that hey, mental illness is like a broken arm or anything else is definitely as a result of the fall of man, then then the practice of presence, we, we can pray for them. But I do think, and I do want listeners to hear Simone when she said that, when somebody is in crisis, it's okay to say, I'll pray for you, but it's also okay to say, and I get that that might not mean anything to you right now, but I am going to be here for you. I'm the, I, I want to be the hands and feet of Jesus because that is who I want to do. And, and I love that, that scripture reference, faith without works is dead. We have got to walk alongside of these people. And that's why I asked you that question as why mental health advocacy was so important to you, because you are a shining example of that. And so you've already talked to us a little bit about your 
uh, the attempt to take your own life. And we're all really struggling with the vernacular of that. And I'm really in a place right now. <laughs> it is it is May of, of 2022. And the, the completed, uh, com- completed loss of life, self-inflicted loss of life of Naomi Judd hit me really hard. And um, I actually got in a conversation on Facebook about what you just talked about. If you if you take your own life, you're going to go to hell. And the, and the girl said to me, well, the Bible says that. I said, where? And she said, well, it's murder. I said, well, okay, well, if that's true, then it's still covered by the completed work of Jesus on the cross. And so I think that that was really important for us to talk about. Um, for those of you who are out there listening, who and, and this lady came back at me and she said, people just always told me it was in the Bible that if you killed yourself, you were going to go to hell. And when you asked me where that scripture was, I couldn't tell you. She said, maybe I should listen more. Mm. That would, I would think that would change so much if people would be open to listening as opposed to just speaking. I believe that so many times people just want to come with advice or come with some type of quick solution and it's not always a quick solution with mental illness right and and that yeah for some people especially when you have like when you're a preacher or you're part of the clergy it's tough yeah and you know our friend marlena and and i will link her episode because i interviewed her last season but our friend marlena also attempted to to end her life and she is she's i would i would say she's searching um marlena is but it was interesting when she was telling me the story after she sent multiple text messages to people saying that she was going to end her life, that the one person that came, um, cl- climbed through her window, climbed in bed with her, and just held her was her best friend and the only Christian that she knows. And so the ministry of presence is so important. We want to fix it. We know that Jesus is the answer to everything. That's the Sunday school answer. But there's a time and place, and doing life with people is so important. And so you and I could talk about that forever. We could do a whole other podcast on faith mm-hmm. and faith and, and mental m- mental illness. But it is Mental Health Awareness Month, and you have some diagnoses that I want my people to learn a little bit about. And so, can you briefly tell us, as comfortable as you are, what are your your mental health diagnoses, and what are they? I well, I was diagnosed ten years ago. I have to go get another. Um, I talked to my psychiatrist about getting another, um, like updated one, but I just kind of treat symptoms like with any other illness. I was diagnosed at first borderline personality disorder, bipolar disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, major depressive disorder, alcoholism, eating disorder, which is anorexia nervosa. And I think that might be it. <laughs> so let's briefly go through a couple of those ones that a lot of people hear a lot because people get confused. Yeah. Like I have PTSD. Absolutely. And so talk to me, talk to us first oh, about... Did I say PTSD? That was not Well, that's a given. But uh, <laughs> so let's start, I, I want to cover a couple of those. Let's talk about bipolar disorder briefly. I have a, a limited understanding of it. My listeners probably have an even more limited understanding of bipolar disorder. What's it like to live with? So first of all, I want to just kind of explain um, what bipolar actually is. I know there's a lot of misconception, especially in the media, about bipolar disorder. And it's somewhat depicted as just emotional instability. And it is mood swings to an extent, but it consists of manic episodes or hypomanic episodes and depressive episodes. So depressive episodes, obviously that's more commonly understood is when you're feeling like you are depressed, you're uh, having, you're in a state of depression and that's the typical state of depression, but also with the manic or the hypomanic episodes, depending on if you have bipolar type one or bipolar type two is it's like a high, it's a, it's a time period when you're having a high, you are for like, for example, speaking fast or, um, eating a lot, your eating changes. Um, those are some things for me over shopping, high sexual appetites. There is just, I, I tend to have to write everything down. That's one of the ways I know that I'm having a hypomanic episode. I was diagnosed with bipolar type two. So my, my, I have hypomanic episodes as opposed to manic. Mm. They're a little less severe, but um, sometimes when you are manic from what I have read up, you can be in a state of psychosis. Like it will take you to a state of psychosis and you just, you lose, kind of lose control, yeah. I would say. 
but those are the the opposites. That's those are the highs and the low that are associated with bipolar disorder. And I think that substance abuse come. This is where, and and I don't think this is true for you, uh, although you did mention alcoholism. But that bipolar disorder, I would imagine that a lot of people self medicate. So if you're depressed, you know, you're 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 trying to get something for an upper. And if and if you're manic, you probably don't know what you're doing. I do know a little bit more about that manic side than 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 I thought I did, but. But but I, I know that substance abuse comes in. Bipolar disorder, well-treated by medication. Is that correct? Yes. Gotcha. Yes. So let's talk about one I really don't understand, and I know my listeners don't, which is borderline personality disorder. So borderline personality disorder, honestly, I believe was a um, misdiagnosis. Mm. I don't believe that. I, I believe it's mostly the bipolar disorder. And a lot of times the borderline personality disorder and the bipolar disorder are misdiagnosed like between each other because they have a lot of commonalities. Um, with borderline personality, I don't, I can't speak too much on it, but it seems like it's a little bit more extreme and the aggression. I will say where I believe the diagnosis came in at for me was a lot of people who have borderline disorder um, personality suffer from abandonment issues. So I have like if some if I feel like somebody's going to abandon me might act out a little differently my behavior might change and things like that but other than that like there's a lot of things with borderline personality disorder that doesn't necessarily that don't fit with you with. Yeah. yeah and a lot of times when they do those tests if it's in it like for example clearly we both were in psych wards at one point in our lives mm -hmm. they they give you those tests at the worst possible time ever right in your life right. and so i you know i got a bunch of diet when i was in the hospital i got a bunch of labels attached to me that weren't true because they were seeing me my very worst and so but bipolar is the one that i know that that you suffer with probably the most but i watch you thrive through it and i'm so proud of you for that i'm proud of you for continuing to go back to the doctor and say hey you know what because it's not you know mental health is is the totality of our of our, of our lives right and so when we're making good choices to surround ourselves with people like you and like me and like we've talked about Marlena and people that that understand mental health issues and will keep us on our toes, then then we can live a life and we can get better. And maybe we can change medications. Maybe we can even, I don't know about bipolar, but I know for PTSD, I've been able to come on and off medications depending on how activated I was. And so bipolar disorder during Mental Health Awareness Month is really important because there's a genetic component to that. We're talking a lot in this season about uh, generational trauma. There, there's certainly a genetic component to it. Now, I'm going to ask you this question, and this is just going to be an educated opinion on your part. You know, if I were 25 years old, I'd go back to school and study all of this. But you had trauma as a child. You have bipolar disorder and, and many other things that you mentioned, including PTSD, alcoholism, anorexia nervosa. You had childhood trauma. Do you, which do you think came first, the, the, the trauma or the illnesses? Do you think the trauma the called trauma the illnesses? Sure. Yeah. Yes, a thousand percent, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think so too, because I think, especially as I, in the, in the episode that dropped before you with, with Jeremy Fox, uh, who is an EMDR consultant, talk to me a little bit about brain chemistry. And, and even I know that my brain was physically affected by trauma because the MRI scan showed that. And so I was curious as to whether you felt like, hey, if I would have had a decent or a more normal childhood without four or five adverse childhood experiences, would you still be living with bipolar disorder? And that's only a question that maybe can be answered way down the road. But I do think that it's something that we should investigate. I really do. And so I was curious about your answer to that. So yes, I do believe that it's genetics. It's a mix, I would say, of genetics and trauma, but the trauma, I would say, perpetuates the mental illness. I know, I remember suffering from depression from a really early age, and because nobody understood my behavior, there was trauma on top of trauma because nobody knew what to do with me, and then, I, like I said, it just exasperated the mental illness. It just continue to snowball until it was treated because there was nothing being done to treat the mental illness. I don't think anybody even knew that it was mental illness or what it was. They just knew that I was acting out. And from there, you know, it just got worse until it all came to a head. And I think that's something really important for parents, listeners to hear is 
and, and, and I'm going to drop a blog tomorrow, all week this week, I've been doing uh, a blog on childhood depression. But if your child is acting out, like crazy acting out, like it sounds like maybe you were, this has to be investigated. You have to get that child in front of a doctor because trauma is genetic. We've talked about it a couple episodes back. It, generational trauma, epigenetics. There's even a graphic that a, 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 a pregnant mom with a baby girl with eggs in her uterus in utero, mm-hmm. that is three generations of people being affected by a traumatic event. If mm-hmm. and, and so it is really important for parents out there, if your child is acting out, to investigate whether there is something else going on because there may not have been any actual trauma. They may not have been abused or any of those adverse childhood experiences that we talked about, but because trauma is embedded in our DNA, it's there. And just like I have celiac disease, I went through a divorce about 14 years ago and the stress of that divorce turned on that genetic celiac gene. And I believe strongly that that happens in mental illness when we have trauma. And so I was really... Yeah, I was really interested in your answer to that question. I and agree. that's something else that we have in common. I remember we used to do the autoimmune sort of room and I was diagnosed with lupus 2020. And I truly believe that that was yep. kind of triggered by stress, I have, um, yeah. internalizing things. Yeah, internalizing things instead of taking care of things. And that the graphic that you were talking about, that sounds really powerful. And that's so true because it goes from generation to generation. And it's important for us to start acknowledging the trauma that we have different, the different traumas that we have encountered and taking care of it because it has to be dealt with in order to stop it from the future generation. But also you spoke to the alcohol, alcoholism and mania. And I think that is something else that I wanna mention before we move on is that it sounds like a laundry list diagnosis, but it all, kind of falls under <laughs> the bipolar like it all goes hand in hand with the generalized um, anxiety disorder I get really anxious when I'm having a manic episode the depression the depression obviously when I'm having a depressive episode the alcoholism mania eating disorder yeah I, I mean I guess it could all go hand in hand, but it all just kind of falls it all kind of falls under the bipolar for sure so uh, yeah. I did want to say that was something else because it sounds like a lot but it really is just compiled trauma and mm-hmm. under the same mental and and just so you know it, it is a lot even if it were just one diagnosis it is it is a lot and you need to hear me say that you are a warrior you really are because i i don't have bipolar or, or and i don't know how uh, i do have a obviously complex post-traumatic stress disorder but i don't understand major depression i don't understand mania i don't understand i do have an eating disorder but yeah, I think that I will include that graphic in the show notes because it is a powerful graphic on, on generational trauma. And that's exactly what happened to Naomi Judd is there's just trauma after trauma after trauma in that family, murder, um, abuse of all sorts. And, and, and absolutely, if we are predisposed to some of these mental illnesses, these things are going to get turned on by trauma. So thank you for clarifying that. Well, this obviously is a podcast that, that highlights trauma. And we and, and as you know, you know me well enough to know that I, all I want to do is help people. I think some people think sometimes when you have a podcast that you get rich like Joe Rogan, not me. Um, but we really like to help people in several ways. All of my social media, and I know yours is way better than mine, but is geared to help people get educated and hope with mental illness. I don't put all of that there to get people to listen to the podcast, but mainly however I can get this information that we're trying to disseminate to people today out there, I am doing that. We believe that though, that that help and hope is accomplished through three, we call it the three C's on this podcast, counseling, church, and community, and most of all, who I call the star of the story, the star of my story, and I know the star of many of my listeners' stories, is Jesus. You have a nonprofit organization called A Sound Mind, and we're going to get there in a minute. But can you share with us how, I'll ask them individually, but first, can you share with us how community plays a role in helping you live with your mental health status and your trauma? For sure. I'll say two ways in specific. I want to say, and we'll talk more about my organization, but one of the first things that I did when I started was peer support groups. 
and I think it's so important to you, therapists are super important vital but also having people around you that understand you that you can lean on that can relate to because everybody like you said doesn't understand bipolar disorder so I think that was really really important and a game changer and also I want to say my circle not just having a circle but making sure that your circle is what you need what Mm -hmm. is going to keep you healthy is a positive impact on your life so I would also say that in regards to community because a lot of times we think just having people around is going to be helpful but if you don't have the right people around you it can actually be detrimental to your mental health so those are the two things I wanted to say in specific about community yeah definitely pick pick your circle pick your 2 a.m friends pick the people who are going to call you higher pick all of that you mentioned this briefly a little bit. Did church have any positive, does church have any positive impact on how you manage your life now? Definitely. Um, in more ways than one. One way I would obviously go to church, getting the word in me, uh, encouragement, that's constant encouragement. And it also, I would say, in regards to keeping my routine, getting up on Sunday, going to church, having a routine is so important. So being in that positive atmosphere I believe is also extremely helpful in regards to my mental health. This question is going to be Captain Obvious, but is Jesus the star of your story? Absolutely. Absolutely. I just, again, if he hadn't saved me, I wouldn't be here right now. Um, If it was up to me, I would probably, (laughs) again, I lost control. I didn't want to be here. I owe it all to him. He knew You know, I was here, I'm here for a purpose and he created me with a purpose and he had all of this in mind when he was writing my story. And I definitely, definitely give all glory to him. I could do nothing without him. I could not help the next person. I couldn't help myself, nothing. I can do nothing without him. So he's definitely the star of my story. Do you know what verses came to my mind when I think of you? There's, there's a verse that says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God and to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And you are not ashamed of the power of Christ. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I like you have to acknowledge. I feel like it's important to acknowledge your Savior. Amen. Period. Yeah. Amen. And and He knows. And I often quote on this podcast Hebrews four fifteen. We do not serve a high priest who does not understand our suffering. Talking about abandonment issues, Jesus got abandoned by the Father on the cross. He said, "My God, My God, why have why have you forsaken me?" And so I just think I am so proud of you because you, those, and and going back to community for a second, we were community for each other for a long time in those clubhouse rooms. Now we were, we were the advocates until we all burned out and then we were there for each other. (laughs) And then at the same time. (laughs) Yeah. I have to say we all disappeared at the same time. Yeah. And I, I haven't been on there in a minute because it is, it is a very, it's an interesting app and some of my favorite people like you, I met there. But but it can be dangerous. But it was a community there for a minute when we were all locked in our houses, and we would have people from all over the world come into those rooms. Especially, I was you. You were kind enough to to allow me to kind of take the lead on the PTSD room, and all across the world, people were just in dark rooms. And I remember being in a dark room two o'clock every every. I think it was Tuesday. Two o'clock every Tuesday, we had that PTSD room, and there was that community. And even there, you and I talked about our faith in Jesus. And so I am so reminded of you when I think of that verse. But but this is Simone Lachey. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto my salvation. And that is the verse that reminds me of you. Well, now's the fun part. Now's the time to talk about your own advocacy work. Tell us about your mission. Your your organization is called Of a Sound Mind, and I have no doubt that that's a playoff of that Bible verse in First or Second Timothy. But I want to give the mic to you because I want people out there who support things like ours, my podcast. My podcast is funded for all of 2022, and so I love sending people to 501c3 organizations with similar mindsets and, and with similar missions. And so talk to us about the, the genesis of, of, of starting a sound mind, what's coming up for you. I know you've got a very, very, I'm so excited about a series you have coming up on suicide prevention. And so I just want to give you two or three minutes here to tell people about of a sound mind, how they can donate if they want to, how they can be involved, where they can find you on Instagram. For sure. So like you said, but 
the name is of a son mine and it was derived from the scripture uh second timothy 1 7 for god has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind and it is the mission is to promote mental health awareness but also support people who live with mental health disorders so like for me for example the peer support groups were super helpful support for me. Um, I did, I want to shout out NAMI, the National Alliance of Mental Illness. Yes. I started with them. <laughs> They're awesome. And they are a national organization. So definitely, if you're listening, look into that. They have peer support groups all over the um, country. But also, um, I, I wanted to start more faith-based support groups. I didn't see a lot of faith-based mental health support. So that is one of the reasons that I, I, I had started Of A Sound Mind was to change things up a little bit, start creating some of the things that I hadn't seen and also continuing to open doors for like the, for like things that, are, that NAMI are doing that people aren't seeing. So that is something that we do promoting mental health awareness by these different events that I'm doing, um, workshops, so that people understand, like you said, suicide prevention is something that's really near and dear to my heart. The two, three things that I talk about most are suicide prevention, bipolar disorder, and also adolescent depression. Um, so those are, that's that's my heart. Those are my passions. But mental health awareness as a whole, I think is so important. And also going beyond the media talking about anxiety and depression and really getting into and getting support for people who live with PTSD, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, um, borderline personality disorder, all these things that aren't necessarily talked about as much. And they're talked about, I feel like if they are spoken, it's more in a negative manner. Um, <laughs> like I see so they're talking about mental illnesses and lifetime, but it's in a negative, it's in a negative way. It's awful. So just promoting awareness so that people are educated. Also making sure members of the clergy are better educated to deal with mental health crises. Um, but my most recent initiative that I'm working on is getting together um, I want to get together some meal prep people, some chefs, and also some cleaning companies so that we can provide services for people who are struggling with depression at a discounted rate. Wow, um, that's so cool. Proposal. Yeah, I'm excited about that because it's something that you don't see. Yeah, I never even and thought I about that. Like hire somebody <laughs> to come clean your house because we all know that a cluttered house is a cluttered mine and all of the exactly. things. Simone, that is brilliant. I'm excited about it. I'm I'm excited to get it um get it going. I have my first in person event next week, and so after we do that, that's gonna just be my kind of it's like a launch party. We're gonna have a piano discussion and and all those types of things. But after that, I want to get straight to these initiatives. I know that you're doing the pro bono therapy. I that's something else that I am looking to do. But yeah, those are just some of the things that I'm working on. I know I'm missing something. You know, I'm, I'm always busy. I'm well, tell working. us tell them where they can find you. So um. I'm going to put your link tree in the show notes, but is it, what's your website? My website is www.ofasoundmindinc.org. Okay. And it is a 501c3 organization guys. And so you can donate to it. And Simone, I would like to announce to you here live on this podcast that the second scholarship that we will be awarding in 2022 will be in Simone Lachey's name. And you can either pick the person or the, or the organization, and we can talk about that a little bit offline. But I wanted to surprise you with that because I am so proud of what you are doing. I'm, thank, I'm so grateful that you are here today. And I'm going to tell you something that I tell everybody. And you know what I'm going to say because you've heard me behind plenty of microphones. But not only by me, not only by the God of the universe, but you are seen, you are known, you are heard, you are loved, and you are valued. And I want you to go out and find somebody that can use a scholarship, the Simone Lachey Scholarship of 2022. And as soon as you find that person, you shoot me a text message, and that money will be into Of A Sound Mind so that you can continue your mission. Because I am awarding these scholarships in the name of people who are out there fighting for people who cannot fight for themselves or for people who fought for me. And you fall into one of those two categories. And so congratulations on the awarding Thank of you. the Wednesdays with Watson Pro Bono Counseling Scholarship of 2022. And so guys, so Thank you. well, you are welcome. You're welcome. I am so proud of you. I want to thank you for being here today. Guys, we have talked about some pretty heavy topics here today. I do want to 
provide you with a little bit of information. I'll also provide this in the show notes. But if you or somebody you know is struggling with mental illness, particularly suicidal ideations, please reach out for help. Please know that you are seen and known and heard and loved and valued. There is a phone number that you can call. It is 1-800-273-8255. And then beginning on July 16th, 2022, if you just simply text 988, wherever you are in the world, that this is not effective until July 16th, 2022, but if you just text 988, wherever you are in the world, they will connect you with a suicide organization that will help you through your crisis. And so if you or somebody you know, please, please, 1-800-273-8255. Simone mentioned NAMI is a great organization, M-A-N-I dot org. That is a fantastic organization as we are highlighting Mental Health Awareness Month. There is also the Complex Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder Foundation you can find on Twitter. I am a freelance writer for them. They're doing some good work. There is lots of help and lots of hope for you guys out there. People like Simone are bringing that to you. And so, Simone, thank you so much for being here with us today. And I would just want to thank you so much for having me. Oh, it is my pleasure. And I just wanted to give you any parting words before we let the listeners go. I just want to let everybody know that there is hope. There is hope no matter where you are. God is not going to let you die in depression. Amen. So if you still have breath, you still have purpose, there is somebody who loves you. I love you. And keep going. Keep going. You're not meant to die in depression. We are meant to live a life, and we're meant to live that life more abundantly, Scripture tells us. And so, again, thank you for being here today. I love you. I adore you. And I'm so proud of you. And as soon as you get that person or that organization in your head, we will award the Simone Lachey 2022 Pro Bono Scholarship. And that is because of listeners like you out there, guys, who donated to our fundraiser at the end of last year. This will be the second of four of these scholarships that we are able to award this year. So thank you so much for being here, Simone. Thanks again for having me. This was a pleasure. Well, guys... I hope that you gleaned something from the beautiful, beautiful soul that is Simone Lachey. As we continue our mission here, please do not hesitate to reach out to either one of us. And you can do that simply by right there in your show notes. I will have Simone's link tree. I'll have my link tree right in the show notes. It is my hope that while we are highlighting this Mental Health Awareness Month, that everybody will realize that every month we need to pay attention, not just the month of May. We'll be back here in two weeks, and we are going to focus the entire month of June on racial trauma, specifically to black and brown communities. Until then, to the rest of my listeners, I want you to know you know what I'm going to say. Just like I told Simone, you are seen, you are known, you are heard, you are loved, and you are valued. See you in two weeks, guys. Let my life glorify you and teach me to walk beside you.